How y'all doing this morning? Um, I'm just waking up and um, I noticed something that I posted last yesterday that I was going to tell people about. You know how, you know how, you know, Master P made his money, and uh, the guy's very smart. You know, he might not be the most you know, educated person in the world, but you know, he's smart. He knows business. Um, then one way he made a bunch of money is he never took the first offer. Never. Anytime somebody came to him with contracts or negotiation, he always turned them down two or three times. Because he always said, if they have that much money, they got four times more money. They're just starting off low. And he never, ever accepted money. You know, the first off. Number two, he surrounded himself with good people, good business people, good intelligent people, like Boz and, you know, a bunch of other people who were very business savage people. And um, so there was always, and he was always investing. He was investing into a sports agency, closing, you know, his music, real estate, security guard company, no limit film, no limit movies, you know, you name it. You know, and um, he just, you know, he, he has so much, you know, you know, you know, venture into him. Um, when I go to meetings today and I do meetings, I, I can see myself, I do a bunch of his patterns, you know, and things that he does. And I catch myself sometime and, you know, what a great way. You know, guy started his record label with $10,000 and built it up to 400 million. Who don't want to follow that pattern? I do, you know, and um, it's just so much, you know, that people ask me about my time, you know, with No Limit, and, you know, Pete, you know, he, he was a very nice guy, and, um, you know, it's just, it's just something that, you know, we just got to deal with, and, um, you, know, he, you know, he was just very smart, very smart investor you know, stuff like that. But I hate answering these questions all the time. But if that's what people want to know about, you know, I talk to them about it. You know, um, it's like people want to know about my health, you know. Is it true, I'm, you know, is it true Big Swole sick? You know, and I'm not ashamed to tell nobody I'm sick. You know, if I, I in the last year, two years, I've had two, two heart failures and I've had a heart pace to put in my body. Um, I have a, a heart pump. Um, now I'm on a, I'm on a um, Louisiana heart transplant list. And I'm not ashamed to tell nobody about what's going on in my life because I know it helps so many other people. And just like a lot of people think, oh, I want to be rich, I want to make money. You know, my goal is to save souls, to help so many help people. And I mean it, if I had a million dollars, I'd probably get away with 700, 800,000 of it because I like helping people so much. You know, and um, I hate every time I, I look up, you know, it's a question, you know, about no limit, but that's just who I am. You know, that's what I was. and. You know, I'm not ashamed, you know. You know, just like with Snoop Dogg. You know, I still remember the day we brought Snoop on board. <laughs> it was a it was an honor and we became real good friends and I'm real good friends with Snoop Dogg and real good friends with Mr. Cool. You know, Silk, you know, Masterpiece, C Murder, you know, all these guys, you know, I'm still good friends with them. You know, I don't have any any hate. 
know, towards any of them, you know, but it was cool. And um, one of the questions people know, well, how did I become a noble and a soldier? Um, it goes back, you know, a while. I first started out as his peace fitness trainer. Then I became his fitness trainer and his bodyguard. When Master P was trying out for the NBA, I was training him. I'm the person, I travel everywhere with him. I made sure he got up, made sure he was at practice. You know, I did all that stuff, but you know, it, I got paid for it. And I got paid very, very well, you know, for my services, you know, but you know, and you know, it's, it's this one thing and you know, um, like one question someone asked me, would I ever go back to No Limit? And the answer is no. You know, I would never go back. Um, I'm in a different place in my life. Um, I'm, I'm at peace. Um, I'm happy. Uh, I, have, I don't have to look over my shoulder. I don't have to do any of that stuff anymore. Uh, I don't have to wear a bulletproof vest. Um, do I carry a gun? Yeah, I still carry a gun. I'm always do that. I live in New Orleans. You have to carry a gun in New Orleans. And um, you know, I'm, you know, I miss it. You know, and um, I don't miss the I don't I don't miss the lifestyle. You know, I don't live. You know, I miss the money. Hell yeah. You know, I miss the money big time. But do I miss the peace and happiness? No. I don't miss the peace, and I don't miss the happiness. And there's one thing I want to talk about, you know, before I get off. People, I had someone, a lot of people, not someone, but a bunch of people tell me how about depression. How did I know I had depression? And I'm going to tell you my story. When I was in college, I was, I was, all everything. I was a real good football player in college. I went to the University of Houston. And um, I was projected to be a second or third round pick in the NFL my senior year. Going into my senior year, I can't tell you what happened. I just, I just started isolating myself from everybody. I was sitting in dark rooms and I had some suicide thoughts, and you know, I hated the world. I hated people around me, and I can't tell you how I started. And um, one day we was at practice, and I accidentally lost it. I got into a fight with my coach, and I'm talking about it was so bad that they had to stop practice. And we was about to go blows to blows, and people was hurt. People was holding him, and people was holding me, you know. And I just, I just want to hurt him, you know. And I remember a good friend of mine, Frankie Thomas, came up behind me, <coughs> and he grabbed both of my arms in, in a bed hug, because he seen I was about to hit him with that helmet, and he told me, Randy, don't do it. You, you don't, you don't ruin your career. Please, Randy, don't do it." And so I went to a major depression. And before the season, I just had enough. I was, you know, I was just thinking about suicide all the time. So we had a, we had a game against Sam Houston State. And after three years of me being a starter, it's probably the worst game I've ever had. This one, one bad game, you know. And I went to my coach and I told him, I said, Coach, his name was Jack Party. I said, Coach, I'm having some problems. I kind of know I was going to have a bad game because I'm not mentally here. Uh, I want to hurt myself and, you know, something's wrong with me mentally and blah, blah, blah. I, you know, I think about hurting people and now, you know, I sit in the room and talk and I tell him everything. And instead of him helping him, he benched me. I got benched because I told my coach, I was having mental issues, mental issues, and he benched me. And I went from a second, third round pick to a free agent. He cost me millions of dollars, and he could have helped me. You know, he could have helped me. 
but back then, this we talk about 1988. Nobody talked about. It. <laughs>